Holy moly, I didn't expect my channel to blow up so fast. As of me making this video, we are now well on our way to the 1000 subscriber milestone. My first video is now reaching over 12,000 views. It's insane how much support you all have given to me and my little YouTube series. From the bottom of my heart, I thank all of you. In light of that, I have a few announcements to make. I've created a Discord server where you can ask me questions about code or even to chat about life. Here I'll provide regular updates whenever I make any sort of change to the game. I've also written a blog. Here is where you'll find the nitty gritty details for every video I upload. So if you want to peer into my mind and how I think about things, here it is. Now that's out of the way, we're going to be making this game genuinely playable today, start to finish. That means a main menu, combat, a basic score counter, and player death. Then finally, I can deem this game as a playable experience. Number 1. Combat Okay, we're just aiming to make a simple melee attack. But, when it comes to code, you always need to plan for the future. When making an attack, there's a lot we have to take into account. Number 1. Cooldown Otherwise, you can mash the attack button, and we're not trying to make cookie clicker here. Number two, it has to feel satisfying. That can be achieved by knockback, visual effects, and sound design. Number three, is there any code we can reuse? Maybe the cockroaches can do a simple attack as well, and we can reuse the code between the player and the cockroaches. And number four, how do we activate an attack? Do we hold down the button? Does it activate upon click? Or do we have to fulfill some condition beforehand? We can't obviously future-proof for every scenario, but it doesn't hurt to try and architect things in a way that sets you up nicely for a bunch of these scenarios. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Time for some boring coding stuff. This is what's called a UML class diagram. I can use this to visualize how I want to design code before I write it. For the non-technical people, it's like a blueprint or design that an architect would make before they build a house. Except, instead of a house, it's code. Anyways, arguably for a project of this size, these designs might be overkill, but they help me convey to you guys what I'm making, or what goes into my brain when I tackle features like this. Now, this probably looks like a bunch of gobbledygook or nerd runes to a bunch of you. To break it down, first I'll describe the coding concept of polymorphism, where you design scripts or classes where you try and mark a blank is a blank relationship to share code. Let's wipe away this UML diagram here and introduce a new one. The most common example of a relationship involving polymorphism is this. A dog is an animal, or a cat is an animal. Cats and dogs share a lot in common, i.e. as animals, they sleep and perform the four Fs. Fight, flee, feed, and f- uh, I mean, mate. But cats and dogs have things they do uniquely. Dogs can fetch and do tricks. Cats like to purr and ignore humans, and wake you up at 2am when you have work at 6am the next day and- In conclusion, polymorphism lets you define that a cat and dog class share these similar animal class qualities, by giving these classes access to the parent class data and actions. Let's go back to our other code. I have this base class, called Ability Behavior, which I want to have the responsibility of managing cooldown and taking in inputs for starting and releasing an ability. Everything that is an ability will inherit off of this. Because an ability is something that manages a cooldown or can start and be released, what inheriting does, to boil it down, is that the script now has access to all this code, while also being able to do its own stuff. So. This simple melee attacking script, which I called simple melee attack ability behavior, not only can it manage attacking everyone in its range and dealing knockback to them, but with minimal effort it can also keep track of its own cooldown and does stuff when starting or releasing. I could do the same for a ranged attack script, which will also keep track of its own cooldown with minimal effort, or a magic attack script, which will also need to keep track of its own cooldown. Because of inheritance, I now don't have to copy-paste the same cooldown code three times if I want to make three different attacks. Because all of this cooldown code is in one place too, if there is a bug, I only need to fix it in one place, instead of three. Those are some of the main benefits of polymorphism. 
Anyways, now that that lecture is out of the way and all of this powerful code has been written, we can finally do this. Pathetic, huh? Let's amp up the juice. Combat completed. Let's just add a little counter that goes up based on how many cockroaches we've killed. Number two, a main menu. So, a main menu was actually quite simple in Unity. Basically just a bunch of buttons. One that loads the main scene, and one that quits the application. It was just a matter of connecting up the buttons, and then I had a functioning main menu. To make it look not horrible, I decided to draw up a little title. A main menu start button, and a main menu quit button. And here we go, main menu complete. Number three, death, mortality, and the game over screen. I got a slap on some code to give my own character some health, and some code to allow the cockroaches to hurt me when they get in range. Here's where we get into the beauty of Unity's lifecycle hooks, where I just basically slap in code that runs when this player gets destroyed. The code I'm running is to create a game over screen. With the game over screen, if you press this button, it'll take you straight back to the main menu. Beautiful. Number four, final touches. It's a pretty sad experience to play this game. You wanna know the reason why? There's no real oomph if anything dies. Everything's better with blood and guts, and so that's what we'll implement with Unity's particle system. Let's add on some particles when you hit a cockroach just for good measure, and there we have it. A kind of polished, playable experience. After all that coding, we finally have a fully playable experience. Time for a demo. Okay, it's cobbling together nicely. It feels nice to play, but it's still incredibly basic at the moment. We're now getting into the swing of game development, and I know this episode was a bit of a boring technical one, but hopefully you learned something. Next week, I'll be looking into a feature a friend suggested, where I implement Rat Necromancy. Thanks for watching, hit the like and subscribe, and tune into the next one.